It's the almighty EA Ski. We all have a story to tell and a lesson to learn. This is my story. Yo, what's good with it? It's the almighty EA Ski, and this is my story coming from my mouth. You know, I'm from East Oakland, California, 51, man, and um, that's what it is. How would you say was your, your upbringing? Poor, middle class, or rich? Um... I say, you know, middle, you know what I'm saying, for what it was. I mean, you know, my parents probably, they, well, they made me feel like it was middle anyway, you know, because they worked hard. Um, I know that they put a lot of stuff on Lelway, you know. I know that they, uh, they did everything that's possible for me to enjoy being able to do what I do. I never felt like it was a struggle to me, but it probably was a struggle to them, if that makes sense. Yeah. what I thought I would be as a kid. Um, you know, I want to be uh, a martial artist. You know, I want to be in the martial arts. And, um, you know, I admired, you know, well, I first admired Jim Kelly and, you know, then I got into Bruce Lee, watching all those movies coming up, you know, so that was one of the biggest things I wanted to do was be in the martial arts. Was y'all watching the Shaw Brothers movies back then? Nah, I wasn't, oh, okay. I wasn't. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't watching no. Um, well, did you grow up in this uh, single or co-parenting home? Co-parenting, yeah. Um, Lord bless him, man. Both my parents still together to this day. Okay. How far I got in my education, you know, I uh, went to college, you know what I'm saying, for a little bit, but I was traveling. And um, I was uh, fighting, and so, you know, I wind up, you know, backing off of uh, college for a little bit and was, uh, you know, fighting across the country and then wind up getting into music. So, more or less got into more of a trade. You talk about, like, your, your, how you got into music. Um, how I get into music. I got into music because I, I love, you know, just the culture of uh, hip hop, you know. Um, I've always loved music, period. You know, my family, you know, was up on a lot of music, you know, from the dramatics to, you know, just older music, James Brown on down. And then hip hop came in and um, I, I really, really got inspired when I heard Run DMC. You know, that really kind of really made me want to take it seriously, just the way it made me feel. So yeah, Run DMC kind of inspired the music part of me. And, and, we, and then when did you get into it as a career? Um, oh, it took years, man. I mean, you know, it was, I got into it, you know, basically just practicing and doing talent shows and those transfer to, you know, you know, people liking you, doing my own independent records. That started kind of like, you know, getting a little big for me in my community. And then I started, you know, shopping, you know, uh, back then they called them demos, you know, three song demos, you know, sent them to like, you know, Jive Records and, you know, some of the big labels, you know, and got some rejections. Got, you know, I still have some rejection letters, you know what I'm saying? But that was the part of me getting into it and start to really try to take it seriously to try to go pursue, get a real situation for it, you know. What was your first career choice? Martial arts. You know, my career was, uh, you know, I was a world champion fighter, you know, in the world, you know, uh, three-time heavyweight fighting in, in, in the world. So, uh, you know, that kind of, you know, stemmed from me being like seven, you know, seven years old, got into it. And um, as I, you know, slowly got into it, you know, started being a, a champion fighter. You know what I mean? And that was paying, you know, like I was getting a lot of prize money, went to the Seoul, you know, Seoul Korea Olympic Games in 88. So, you know, a lot of this stuff is, uh, you know, was just me being dedicated towards martial arts. So that was my first uh, love and passion. Um, how far did you get in your education? 
At what age did you you feel you became an adult? That's a good question. You know, the age I feel I became an adult was, uh, I want to say, when I was about like 26, 26, because I caught my first uh, major gun case. It was real, it was a serious case though at the time because of the whole OJ Simpson and all the stuff that was going on and me kind of being big in music now, I became a public name. So, you know, they were trying to, you know, make a, a an example out of entertainers thinking that they were above the law, so to speak. And I think that's where this record, uh, the Blast by Av2 record came from off the Friday soundtrack. You know, I really wrote that, you know, sitting down for a little bit. And, um, and that inspired that, you know, why I had this pistol, why I did this, why I did that. And it let me know the repercussions of it too, you know, getting caught up in the system. You know, the system ain't something you want to get caught up in, you know, because you can go in there for something small and it could turn into something huge. So, you know, I think around 26 when I, I caught that, it made me realize you have to really think and you have to understand, you know, everything that's simple can become something, you know, for real, for real, you know. So I would say 26. At what age did you make the career choice that most people know you for? Um... You know, that's that's a hard question because, uh, you know, a lot of people know me from being a world champion and fighting, you know, like they know me as Sean Adams, you know, like a world renowned, you know, I was in the magazines, I was in some of the top magazines in the world, you know, as far as a fighter. So they know that side of me and then they know the side of me as being, a, you know, a legendary producer artist. And that transition happened around in uh, like, I want to say, uh, 91 when I did the first uh, Spice One album. You know, people started like, man, this this guy is, you know, he's making some noise. So, you know, so that's kind of a double answer, but, you know, that's how it was. What were your early struggles pursuing your dreams as a fighter and as a producer? Uh, I don't feel like I had struggle as being a fighter because, you know, I had, uh, you know, a great, you know, instructor instructor Sifu Bill Owens, you know, um, shout out to Sifu Bill Owens and Simo Mary Owens. So they was like my second parent. So I didn't really have a struggle. I mean, I, I went through the, you know, the diversity, you know, the perseverance, you know, through that. Um, music was the only struggle was, you know, you had to save up money to, you know, get up, you know, get in the studio. You know what I mean? It was way more expensive back then than it is now. You know, I mean, studio time was not a joke. The equipment was more, you know, expensive, you know, just talking about one machine was like three to four grand. So, you know, trying to save up that type of money and um, piece by piece to try to compete with the, the cats that was out because, you know, before then you just sounded kind of generic, you know what I mean? So I think that was the biggest struggle was just saving up the money to, uh, to try to get a good demo so that people would take you seriously, you know what I mean? To Almighty EA Ski, we all have a story to tell and a lesson to learn. This is my story.